A very good morning to all of you. This is the third part of the video lecture series on uh, palynology. Uh, and in this video lecture, I will be talking about uh, the apertures of the pollen grains and spores. Apertures are uh, thin or unthickened areas in the spore or the pollen wall where from the spore or the pollen grain germinates. You can say it is the germ pore. There are different types of apertures uh, uh, with respect to their shapes and sizes and their position. So in this video lecture, we will specifically be talking about this thing, that what are their different types and how do we uh, classify them. In a broader way, we can classify apertures first into two categories. One is the simple type of apertures, other is compound type of apertures. This is on the basis of the, the outer and the inner mouth of the apertures. This outer and inner mouth, this uh, originates because the wall is a thicker, wall is thick uh, material and there is an outer opening and there is an inner opening and there is a middle part also. You, you can imagine about a well in which there is a mouth at the outer region and then you go downward and then you get the water where there is also a diameter. So if this thing, this the whole, the inner area uh, and their, its shape is congruent throughout, then it will be a simple kind of uh, aperture. And if it varies, if the outer uh, mouth is wider than the inner mouth, uh, and there is a difference in the middle also, then it is a compound kind of uh, aperture. The outer mouth is called the ecto aperture, the inner mouth is called the endo aperture. This is uh, about this, there is a slide in this video later on in, in this lecture part in this lecture. However, I thought to mention it at the very beginning because it is the broader categorization. Now talking about the other types. Uh, as far as the position is concerned, spores could be polar or they could be non-polar. Polar spores are of uh, generally are of two types because there are two poles. Uh, those which are present on the proximal pole uh, proximal polar uh, apertures, they are called lit marks or lesiora. Uh, and the, the one that are present on the distal pole are called sulcus. So this uh, lit mark, they could be monolit or they could be trilit depending on the type of tetrad uh, because the proximal pole is based on the tetrad attachment site. Uh, if it is a tetrahedral tetrad, it will produce a, a trilit, triradiate aperture on the proximal pole that is called trilit. Here in this picture you can see that uh, this one, this is the trilit polar view and this is the equatorial view of the same and this is the distal view. Since there is no aperture on the distal pole, there is, it, it is empty, you can find this the triradiate aperture is called the trilate aperture. Again, if the tetrad is in tetragonal arrangement, then the attachment site is almost uh, uh, elongated, almost longitudinal, you can say. And that's why the furrow, the, there is a single furrow-like aperture that is produced. Litmark itself is furrow-like aperture. So it may be monolit or it may be trilit, but it's a furrow-like aperture. So this is a single furrow. Um, you can, as you can see in the polar view, this is a single furrow. This is proximal polar view and this is uh, uh, equatorial view, major equatorial axis through, through the major equatorial. You can also view from this side, from this side that will be another equatorial view, minor axis equatorial view and this is the distal polar view in, uh, in which you do not see anything. So this is monolith type of aperture. These lit mark types of apertures are the characteristic of uh, pteridophytes because this is a primitive type of aperture. You can uh, find the trilit apertures in the lycopodium, in selaginella, in teres, uh, but uh, in, in the monolith aperture you can find in polypodium, cristiella, this kind of uh, genera. Now, moving towards the distal polar aperture, there is a sulcus. Uh, we call it the, the monosulcate. The, when there is a single furrow, we call monosulcate. When there are the, the triradiate furrow, just like the trilid, there is triradiate furrow that is called trichotomosulcate. So, uh, usually this sulcus, uh, monosulcate is found in the uh, gymnospermous genus Cycus, whereas the trichotomosulcate is very common. It is found in um, angiosperms. Uh, 
uh, Elias Quinensis is one example of that. So this is also uh, a furrow like a sulcus is furrow like aperture and this fur furrow is if you see it's a um, orientation it's a perpendicular to the polar axis this should be remembered sulcus is a furrow like aperture but it's a uh, orientation is exactly perpendicular to the polar axis because there is other furrow like aperture that we call colpus we will see there that that is parallel to the polar axis so that this this difference has to be noted that this is perpendicular to the polar axis now these two two were the polar apertures now we will talk about non polar apertures sulcus could be non polar also they could be distributed in the equatorial region if that is there the name will be uh, zonosulcate or or stephanosulcate that will be the nomenclature and this is seen in case of nymphia now we will move ahead i was talking about the colpus colpus are also uh, called p colpi rather you can say that is the plural uh, these are also furrow like apertures and usually they are present in in number of 3 uh, equidistantly located and elongated furrow like apertures uh, um, and they are parallel to the polar axis you can see there is a distal pole there is a proximal pole on the top there is a distal pole in the uh, bottom of this uh, structure drawn here and the uh, apertures are along the polar axis that is parallel to the polar axis so these kind of apertures are called uh, tricolpate this condition is called tricolpate condition there could be various uh, variations of this there could be syn tricolpate there could be parasyn tricolpate conditions also we will see them later on and this colpus tricolpate condition is most common in angiosperm this is found in saraca indica cassia species etc now porate porate is a aperture which is rounded in in margin in outline so uh, if there is a single pore we call porate if there are uh, the outer pore are, and the inner pore are different in diameter they will we call it uh, pororate so porate or porous aperture could be distributed on the distal pole they may be singly present or maybe many pores may be present all along the distal region or equatorial region or globally so accordingly if they are present singly uh, we simply call it porous and if they are present globally we call it uh, pantoporous uh, pantoporous condition is seen in the family amaranthaceae uh, whereas uh, monoporate condition is uh, is a characteristic of the family poaceae so porous is also a very common type of aperture uh, now talking as i mentioned about the compound apertures that they have uh, different uh, ecto and endo aperture uh, diameter or area so according to that there are various types of them this is uh, as i mentioned pororate the first one is the pororate where you get the outer uh, ecto aperture is also porous inner that is endo aperture is also porous then you get a colporate where the uh, ecto aperture is uh, is colpus and the inner aperture is porous we call it colporate then we mm, the, both the apertures inner and outer uh, the ecto and endo apertures are colpi so th there could be two arrangements one in which they are they are parallel to each other the other that is perpendicular to each other if they, they are parallel we will call it low long if it is perpendicular we will call it la long so these are the terminologies difficult to remember and there is one condition in which the the situation is la long but the middle part is uh, is kind of a porous then we call it a colpororate so different types of nomenclatures are there with respect to the compound apertures also which makes it a little bit cumbersome to remember now as i was talking about that the uh, uh, Colp uh, colpus have uh, many different variations. Uh, this is a tricolporate condition, the first one that is tricolp. You can see there is a colpus, uh, ecto aperture is colpus, the inner aperture is porous. So this is colporate, and there are three. So this is tricolporate situation. And now in this, the uh, figure B, where you see that uh, this is the distal polar view actually, where the colpi they have uh, further 
proceeded and gradually they merge at the distal polar end. The three colpi merge at the distal fuse at the distal polar end, producing this kind of a situation. This is called syncolpate condition. And if the if the furrow is colporate, we will call it syncolporate condition. So uh, this is called parasynchalpate. When, when while moving towards downward, the colpi they get branched. They, they get dichotomously branched, and the branches fuse. And because of that, there is a triangular area that is left behind, like an island. Then the situation. This is called parasynchalpate condition. This is found in Casia sophera. So uh, this was all about uh, apertures. Hope you like this video. And if you really like it, why don't you press the like button first and then share it, subscribe it and press the bell icon also. Thank you so much for watching.